everyone can't stop talking about what's now become one of the great what-ifs of the coronavirus pandemic. What if we would have known that President Trump believed the virus to be a serious threat to public health as soon as early February? Or that the president who would spend months playing down the threat of the virus in public, was telling people privately back then that he knew at least a degree of COVID-19 spread occurs in the air, that the virus represented a serious public health crisis and was more serious than, even your strenuous flus, to use Trump's own description. Unfortunately, that's a description and an assessment of the virus he decided to share only in private, to longtime Washington Post journalist and two-time Pulitzer Prize winner Bob Woodward as part of 18 on the record interviews between the two men for Woodward's new book Rage that will be published on Tuesday. The book quickly shot to the top of Amazon's AMZN chart of bestsellers, partly over its revelations of how Trump shared his candid thoughts about the deadly coronavirus with Woodward way back on February 7. Not long, mind you, before he would excoriate Democrats at a campaign stop later that same month in South Carolina over what Trump said was a Democratic effort to turn the coronavirus into, their new hoax. Here, in case you haven't seen his remarks yet, is how Trump described COVID-19 to Woodward in early February, weeks before the virus was on most of our radars and before we'd begun to see our lives dramatically changed. You just breathe the air and that's how it's passed, Trump said at the time. And so that's a very tricky one. That's a very delicate one. It's also more deadly than even your strenuous flus. Ten days before he said that in private to Woodward, who will talk about rage with Scott Pelley during the next edition of 60 Minutes on Sunday, the president was also warned during an intelligence briefing that the novel coronavirus could be as deadly as the 1918 influenza pandemic that killed some 50 million people worldwide. And, even scarier, the president was told that asymptomatic spread was happening in China. We all know what happened next. A month after that conversation between Trump and Woodward, the World Health Organization would declare that the virus spread now represented a global pandemic, though Trump pressed on with his public pronouncements, undaunted. He steadfastly resisted wearing a face mask in public for months, he appeared to float social distancing guidelines, snipped at reporters for wearing face masks and promised that the virus would eventually disappear when the weather got warmer in spite of any scientific evidence to the contrary. Trump did all that while his supporters watched, taking cues from the president that led them to believe that if he wasn't worried, they shouldn't be either.